Whoa, hello, hello. Welcome everyone. I am going to do some blending with Gamsol or odorless mineral spirits, whichever you prefer to call it. This little bottle is on Amazon for $10. So this is 4.2 fluid ounces and this is Gamsol, 100% pure odorless mineral spirits. You can also buy, we are working out of Christmas Magic by Ruth Sanderson, by the way, odorless mineral spirits, which is the exact same thing. And you can buy this huge jug of it at Walmart in your painting slash hardware department, depending how your store is set up, for $10. So up to you, whichever you prefer. I used the Gamsol first. My bottle ran out, then I bought this. Honestly, I can't tell you the difference. Um, I know there are some people out there that do not like Gamsol. Um, I am not here to debate whether it works or whether it ruins your page or anything like that. I'm just quickly showing you how I use them. Now, I do advise against baby oil. It leaves grease marks. If you get too much of this on here, it will look like a grease mark, but it will dry and you will never know. Now, if you do that with baby oil, it leaves that oil stain also kind of will soak in and it can go through other pages in your book as time goes on, things like that. So I advise against the baby oil, but as far as the Gamsol debate, um, to each their own. I don't use it on everything. Yes, sometimes, depending on what you do with it, it can dim the color, dull it down a little. Um, that's part of breaking down the wax in the pencils, so to be expected. But other than that, that is far as I go on the Gamsol debate. So, I went ahead and filled in my background. So quickly, I used cream, white, cloud blue, true blue, Copenhagen blue, and then I used denim blue, but I think I already put my pencil away when I was cutting off my desk. And then I'm gonna go ahead and quickly, because I forgot to do it before I turned the camera on, add a tiny dot of indigo. And I'm gonna put it in right here. So, you do not have to fill in the white for this Gamsol to work. Um, it will do the work for you, which is which what makes it nice for backgrounds and large areas. Now you will see I have white spots between the smaller parts of my trees. I'm not going to worry about those right now because once I get a little bit of color on my Q-tip here, I can just lightly kind of fill those in and it, um, that will fix that problem. So. I use Q-tips for mine. Um, I have these thinner ones and I have these thicker ones. I buy both at Dollar Tree or Dollar and a Quarter Tree, whatever you may call it now with the price raise. Still Dollar Tree here, or Dollar Tree Plus, I think, actually. Um, I'm gonna bring it down a little so you can check out this whole blending process up close and we'll get started. Okay, so I use mine right out of the bottle. I know some people frown on that. Um, that's what works for me. <laughs> so I do it. Um, I quickly need a water page though. So I just tip my bottle a little bit sideways. Do not soak it. I mean, you can, but you don't want to waste it because it kind of is expensive stuff. I just get the very tip a little bit wet. If you need to, dot some excess off. Okay. Then I am going to start light to dark. I don't want to drag this black all the way down to my cream. So, like I said, I used um, the Arteza Inconic on my tree, so it won't hurt it to touch it with this Gamsol. You do want to have a good amount of pencil down, though, for this to work well. Now, the cool thing about it is if you don't, your pencils will color over this Gamsol stuff. Just kind of making sure I got everything blended in the cream section. Okay, moving up to blue here. Try not to touch the dark blue just yet. And this will be a lot more easier to see when I get up to the darker blue. So just give me one second. I know this is kind of like I don't see anything happening right this minute. <laughs> but um, once I get up here to this stuff. The magic will happen. Now if you want you can put a blotter paper under. It does go through a little but as long as you're not soaking it it shouldn't affect anything. Um, let's 
stick this under there just in case I dump something more than worrying about blade through, but. All right, so see, there's where I was kind of telling you um, between the trees, I won't worry about a whole lot. And then when I come in with my gamsol, my gamsol will kind of do the work for me. Um, and that's why it's kind of nice because I don't want to have to sit and go through between each one of these little pine needles with a pencil or try to fill it in with chalk because I do like chalk and pastels, but they don't give me that nice vibrant look I'm going for. So you will see we have a little line here. We'll come back and fix that. Right now our job is just to kind of blend it all out. Um, not a rush job, kind of want to take your time. You don't have to press hard because you're not coloring or anything, so just take your time and do it right so you get a nice looking background around this little tree here. Now if you did your tree different and you filled in more green and made it look bushier, perfect, great, that works too. Again, I kind of just didn't want to fight the pine needles all that much. Now a little bit of this gamsol will go a long way. So um, notice I've done the whole thing so far, haven't had to refill. You will definitely be able to tell when it starts to get dry because this easy motion I have going now where I just touch it and it changes will not be so easy when I run out. Now my lights have glow around them, so I am trying to work around the glow. Now a couple of them, like this one, see how you can re-blend it and the glow will pop back up, so it's not a huge worry. Um, not at all. You could have even did your background first if you wanted. No right or wrong way. I do like these Q-tips because these ones, when they start to wear down, you will get the little circle plastic and that can scratch your paper. So I kind of like these ones a little more, but they don't do that. They have enough padding on there. They don't scratch. But again, that might just be because sometimes I get to press in a little hard. I am heavy handed with everything I do. <laughs> I know a lot of people try to tell you hold your pencil higher, this and that, embrace it. Use that to your advantage. Alright, I think we are looking fantastic. I'm going to turn this a little. Sorry if I'm moving it around too much, but it's hard to work around all the little things here. Um, if I get my snow, I'm going to try really hard not to get my snow, but for one, I have a white pencil, two, I have a white gel pen, and three, I'm probably going to glitter mine, so I'm not extremely worried, still trying to be careful. Now, I'm going to transition to this darker color, so I'm going to flip to the other end of my Q-tip just because it's fresh. Again, I'm going to tiny dot my Q-tip. I am going to start a little lower. and then pull my way up. Now make sure you have all your blue done on both sides because once you go up here, you can flip back to the other side, but you don't want to forget and drag this dark back down. So it's kind of like no man's land once you get up here toward the black. So I'm gonna try to blend this. Yes, I use my fingers, I'm a messy person. Some of you will not like Gamsol on your fingers. Um, you can do that with a tissue as well if you have one handy. So quickly, I am going to very carefully come in here. Now the cool thing about using the Arteza markers is that you can go over them and they don't spread. But for two, it's a dark green anyway, so the dark blue doesn't really change the color of them. They still look green. Okay. Like I said, if we need to add some more color in there, we can. 
again, just kind of blending my stuff around a little here. So I got this little section. And this will take some touching up. As it dries, you will see parts you missed, white spots will start to pop out at you. Um, so you might want to hold on to your Q-tip if you are using Gamsol. Okay. Not touching that black just yet. And that little bit of black at the top, um, totally up to you. It just kind of makes it feel like the sun's going down and the darkness is creeping and the lights on our tree are starting to glow. I probably could have brought it down just a little further, but I didn't want a lot of black on a happy Christmas page. You will notice I am getting my frame I washi tape, so not a big deal on my end. Um, you could also go over it with a black marker or dark blue or whatever color. But you might want to tape your border, put some washi over your border, and then do this, and then pull the washi off, and you won't have any mess on your border. This spot's a little tricky here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my smaller one real quick. So I am going to dab a little on this one. Give me one second. Okay, sorry about that. It is negative nine here, nine below zero. Um, and my heater just like will not kick off. I think it thinks it's like freezing to death. I'm not real sure, but I had to go turn it down because I am having a hot flash. I'm not sure if it's because it's so cold or what the heater's deal is, but. I think we got up to like a whole negative three today though, so. On the bright side, we were not below, or negative nine all day. We almost made it above zero, which is like a record for us. Okay. So just kind of doing a little touch up here. I'm going to come in and touch up this black up here and see how I can pull it down a little, give it that nice gradient feel. Careful with this spot, I got a Christmas light right at the top of that tree. Right. So then I'm just coming back with my first one. I just see some white spots I want to rub in. But that is going to be the main of how I do my background. So um, of course it looks a little a little wild right now. I flipped ends. Don't forget to flip ends if you're going back down to your light side. I just wanted to fix this line real quick. Uh, again, we don't want any lines. Okay, and then I will come back in with my appropriate colors and fix my lights a little bit. Um, sorry about the bumping. But yeah, so that is my Gamsol background. 
So one second, Let's see a little section I missed. Um, there is a line here that this is supposed to be snow. I'm making mine sky. Um, I gotta come back and fix this part right here that I skipped in the first video. Adding a little of my blue throughout here using the light end of my sure not to get my snow. All right, so there it is. I will do final touch ups and whatnot, but other than that. We are looking good. I'm gonna pull down and I'm gonna work on the clothes on these mice. All right, so I'm gonna work on their little outfits first. I'm gonna do this cute little girl in the middle. She's gonna be my red girl. So this is Tuscan red, if you are following, just a super dark, it's like a wine red in Prismacolors. If you have not seen my first videos. Um, I know a couple of you are following along, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this page um, on video here. Okay, so with her scarf, we're going to just lightly, notice I'm going very light. I am not scribbling anything in, not pressing hard. Just kind of making sure I got my shadows where I want them before I come in because this color is hard to erase. Okay, I'm gonna go under here. I am going to do this line in her coat darker. Now I picked red for her because of the Santa hat. Um, I'm not, I didn't even look at the color to see what color the cover did, but um, this is the cover page. If you are stuck on colors, you can always follow that or use it for inspiration, take it and flip them, mix them up, whatever works. Trying to make that spot a little dark there. Okay, my next color is uh, crimson red. Sharpen a little cardamom. I'm telling you, if they made a silent sharpener, I would buy one for Christmas because I feel like that comes through so loud when you watch videos. But... Okay, again, just planning, not pressing hard, not trying to blend anything together. I'm leaving a highlight color, highlight spot for a highlight color anyway. And I skipped a section with my dark. Forgot my little button snappy things here. So why I'm here, I'm just kind of darkening the shadows I put in a second ago. Not going to worry about her scarf just yet. I'm going to get her all in first. Okay, and then Carmine Red. This is a little more of a pinky red. Um, you can use Poppy Red if you want a little more of an orangey feel. But this is the color I used on my lights in the background, so I feel like it'll bring my page together nicely. And I don't feel like it'll look too pinky when I get it up with all my other colors. Okay, so bringing back a little bit of that middle red. Rule of three, everything we color, we use three colors, three shades. And then that dark. Here's our cute little hat. Now we're going to do the same thing with the coat. 
So I'm going to come in on her arm here. And I'm kind of just working it a section at a time. Okay, and then I feel like I just need to blend a little of that dark red. Came out kind of streaky right there. Okay. I'm going to do this arm. Try to stay on camera here. I have a bad habit of pulling towards me. <laughs> Maybe it's because I have a hard time seeing. So I feel like i got to pull it towards me. Okay. Now I don't want one arm redder than the other, so I'm going to try to shade the same. Don't forget to darken your shadows if you feel like they got lost. And blend it out nice and smooth. Sorry about the bumping. Oh, oh wrong color. Almost took two. Okay, Carmine coming in with our pinky red again. Not touching the buttons or the book. If possible. Getting a nice layer of that down to work with. Now, as nice as it seems to just scribble over all that, I don't want to do that. I want to color those. Okay. Sorry, it's quiet. Concentration. Oh, I colored it. So I was trying not to do. These little spaces get me every time. I do want to clean those up. I was going to go yellow, but I might have to go more goldenrod so you can't see the red. But we're going to clean those up. We're going to blend. I feel like my shadows are pretty well in there, so I don't need to go any darker there. And same with the bottom of her coat. Um, this is actually a Prismacolor Scholar. For those of you that have been interested in the Scholars, I adore my Scholars. They were way cheaper back when I used to stock up on them. Um, I could get a bunch of them for like 15 bucks. That is not the case anymore. But I do like them as filler pencils so I don't go through my Prismacolor so fast. Um, some of the colors do not match the Prismacolor Premiere set. Got a few that are a little off, but they do work well for large areas where you don't want to burn through your good pencils. I don't know if I would pay the prices I've seen for them lately, but... And mine, um, I don't know about this one. Nope, that one. Some of mine are in actual Spanish. I bought the set with the little bird on them. Um, those were the super cheap ones. But I don't know. I don't think they're cheap anymore. Alright. So. Come back in. Blend out my harshness. Okay, so there is our beginning of our little red mouse. Um, I'm going to do her coat, and then I will have to leave the rest for next time. I'm going to pull cream, a 
which I already have out from the sky again. So pulling in colors from my sky in sand. If I can, nope, nope, not sand. Um, jasmine. It's a little more yellowy and nice feeling. Give me one sec. Okay, so going cream, sand, and goldenrod. And I'm going to do the same thing on her coat. So this is goldenrod. She's turned a little, so I am going to shade her arm. I'm only going one side of this line, because to me it looks like this part of her coat is a highlight. So I'm not going to color that spot. I'm going to go right here where her coat is folded over. Okay, so I did that one a little different. This is going to be your highlight. This spot will be highlighted. So I'm just darkening that up a little. Around her cuff will be highlighted. I'm going to darken around her buttons. I will probably give her brown buttons. So if I get a little goldenrod on the button, I'm not too worried. Okay. And I just want to make sure I have a fuzzy edge because sand is a light color and I don't want any streaks. Okay. Or jasmine, not sand, sorry. I seen sand and that's what gave me the idea, but that is not what I want. Again, leaving highlight. Now it won't seem like much, that one tiny little white dot right there, but it will, you will see it with the cream. So leave it. Again, leaving tiny on the edge there. Now I did the sides of that, left the middle for the cream. Sorry. Almost made it through without sharpening that one. Okay, cream. Circular motions over the whole thing. All right, and there is our coat. I'm going to do this green, a light green, of course. Let me pull you out. All right, so there is our page so far. I think it is coming out pretty good. Um, I am excited about my background, even though as it dries, you will see spots you definitely need to touch up. Um, again, I still have a little little work to do on the mice and my glitter on my tree but other than that we are almost there um, I might also add some snowflakes in the background but questions comments anything like that please let me know and I hope to see you next time thanks for watching